when I've heard this passage uh, from Luke's Gospel, I've heard it as a threat. Jesus is coming. The kingdom of God is near. Be prepared or else. I'm not sure why I understood it that way. I think sometimes maybe we live in such a culture of fear that sometimes it can rub off when we're not paying attention. <coughs> we read billboards and see cardboard signs and, and hear, watch out. Get all your ducks in a row because Jesus is coming back. As if that's something to be afraid of and that we should be shaking in our boots. I'd like to invite us instead that when we hear this passage, that we listen to it as a promise of hope to be embraced. That when we hear Luke's writing, we imagine God with a twinkle in God's eye and a sense of humor. And we can think about once upon a time, there was a young man who had a passion for baked beans. He loved them. Even though they had a somewhat embarrassing and rather lively effect on him. <laughs> One day, he met a young woman and fell in love. When it became apparent that they might marry, he thought to himself that this woman was a good woman and did not deserve to have to encounter the effects of the combination of him and baked beans. And so he decided on his own to make the ultimate sacrifice and give up baked beans. Shortly after, they were married. Well, several months later, this young man was driving home when his car broke down. Since they lived out in the country, he called his wife to let her know that he would be late getting home. And he started walking. And there was a small cafe where the aroma of baked beans was overwhelming. He figured he'd experience his wife's cooking and probably wouldn't have much more than lukewarm, dry meatloaf when he got home. So he gave in to temptation and indulged in not one, but three bowls of baked beans. He figured the effects would be worn off by the time he got home. And so he began walking, putt-putting the whole way home. <laughs> He putted up one hill and put putty down the next. When he arrived home, he felt like he was pretty safe. And his new bride met him at the door, excited to see him. With that newlywed glow, told him that she had prepared a special dinner for him and blindfolded him so that he could experience whatever she had been doing for him. Like he thought, the dry meatloaf, maybe it had catch up this time. And she walked him to the table and sat him down, and he felt the urge coming over him. And just as she was about to take the blindfold off, the telephone rang. She made him promise not to peek at the dinner table, and she went to go take the phone call. Well, he took full advantage of that moment, 
seized the opportunity, shifted his weight, and let it out. <laughs> it was loud and ripe like rotten eggs. He almost gagged and took his napkin and ran the air. Just when he thought that everything was okay again, the urge returned. <laughs> he could still hear her talking in the other room, so he shifted his weight again. <laughs> this one was like a diesel engine. <laughs> and just as rancid as before. He fanned the air, hoping that the smell would dissipate before his new bride returned. Then again, this time it was a blue ribbon winner. <laughs> the windows shook, the plates on the table rattled. A moment later, the flowers on the dining room table died. <laughs> this went on for the 10 minutes that she was on the phone. Each time he waved his napkin or his arms, hoping that she would never catch wind of what he had been doing. Well, finally he heard her say goodbye on the phone and put his napkin back in his lap, folded his hands. He was the picture of perfect innocence when she returned. And after she was assured that no, he had not peeked at whatever dinner she had made, she took off his blindfold and yelled, surprise! And there at the table were 12 of their closest friends. <laughs> to do so. Just like that new bride who was so excited to thrill her husband and surprise him with a dinner party. God is tickled to give Sarah and Abraham a child in their old age to give us every good thing. But in order to receive these as they were intended, we must be open to trading our plans for God's plans and to push away 
whatever our bowls of baked beans are. If we can be prepared for God's unexpected surprises of grace so that we are not caught unaware. In order to do so, we need to release the false senses of security that we hold on to, that we grip so tightly. And to tear open those boxes and rip off those labels. To forget these lowered expectations of dried out meatloaf. And take off our blindfolds of fear of scarcity and our ideas of how things ought to be. <coughs> and then when we walk by faith and allow ourselves to see things through God's eyes, we can see each other with love and grace as the miracle and gifts that we have been given and capture the moment, seize the joy, and celebrate in the surprise party that God wants to give each of us every day. Amen.